baseball on Boulevard Field as the Trojans become the first college team ever to host a world champion. It's March 26th, 2016, 65 years ago to the day that you were out on Bovard Field, just uh, not too far from Dado Field, playing the New York Yankees. What do you remember about the game? Well, first of all, it was astonishing. Uh, Rod Dado was Casey Stengel's buddy, mm -hmm. and that was one year that the Yankees didn't train in Florida. They trained in Arizona, right. so we were able to get them to come to Bovard Field. And we played them well, I thought. I mean, uh, <clears throat> they had uh, 15 runs. We had one. We did get five hits. We each had two double plays. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we were terrible. Mm -hmm. But we got Mantle out twice. Uh, we got uh, DiMaggio out twice. But Mantle hit two homers, a triple, and a single. What was the bigger deal for you, Mantle or DiMaggio? Both. I mean, we didn't know Mantle uh -huh. at the time. He was 18 or 19 uh -huh. years old. So to play against Joe DiMaggio, Yogi Berra, Hank Bauer, Phil Rizzuto, Billy Martin, that was astonishing for me. This was early in Rod Dado's career. What do you remember about Coach Dado back in the 50s? Well, you know, here was a man who was a baseball genius, but he was a psychologist as well as a coach. He'd go to my twin brother, who was the shortstop his senior year. My brother, by the way, made first team All-American shortstop. He'd go to him and he'd say to him, Hal, you don't throw a bad throw to your brother at second base ever. You throw it right up here at the chest every time. Sounds like a brother. And he'd say yes, and then he'd go over to me and he'd say, Stan, your brother's going to make bad throws. You've got to make the double play anyway. Yeah, uh, that's great. Let's bring the pitcher in here. Tom, you were the starting pitcher on March 26, 1951? Yes, I was. And it was really quite an honor, especially to face the New York Yankees on that day. And essentially, it was their starting lineup, so it, it was something awesome, I would have to say. And, do you, and, and you had an idea of how you wanted to pitch the mantle, is that right? Yes. Dato and I met earlier, and I always threw the ball low. I was a low ball pitcher, a little bit of a sinker, and I do remember that I was ahead in the count with the idea to waste a pitch out slow and outside and lo and behold Bannel reaches it and hits it over the right center field it was marked 369 i know frank gifford was on the other side of the fence at the football field and this ball bounced at his feet which was about 400 425 maybe 50. and now when you read all the books as jane wrote a book of last Last boy. Right, Jane Levy, yes. Jane Levy. One of her favorite players was Mickey Mantle, so she wrote this biography and all that. And every time that home run is mentioned, it gets further and further. Now it reached 650. Yes. <laughs> so, so if you go on Google and look up Mickey Mantle's longest home runs, I'm listed as number two, the 650. So does this come up a lot? Do you have people say, you know, uh, I, I know you were the guy that pitched the Mickey Mantle at USC? Not really. Some of the baseball guys around SC, once in a while, it comes up. But the pitch that I, in my mind, which is sort of registered in my mind, is my first pitch to Joe DiMaggio. Mm -hmm. I pitched and the pitched him a little bit high, and it was a little too high. And all I remember is seeing his hat go one way, bat go, and he goes to the ground. I'm on the mound. I didn't know where to hide. But when, when Joe DiMaggio came back up, he just, like nothing happened, ready to hit. And, of course, he just gave a little smile, never said anything. So all I know that we did get... Joe DiMaggio out. As, what, what do you, as what? Stan has mentioned earlier. What? Tommy and I made a great pair. He's tall, I'm okay. short. Okay. He was the ace starter and I was the ace reliever. Okay. In 1951. All right. And did you, again, my memory isn't what it used to be. Did you get into the game on March 26th? No, okay. I think I was next. <laughs> okay. No, I would have loved to have gotten into the game, frankly, um, because it would have been a thrill to pitch to those guys. Yeah. No, not that one. 
Remember the level of excitement that the Yankees were coming to USC? Well, Rod prepared us for every team the same way. Okay. And we were not particularly excited because he always taught us to believe that we could win no matter the opposition. And here's a, a really interesting story. When he went over the lineups before the game mm -hmm. uh, and gave us the scouting reports, mm -hmm. he did with the Yankees the same thing <laughs> that he did with Stanford. Wow. And we got, he said, batting third, number five, DiMaggio, has good power to all fields. Keep the ball in on him. Uh -huh. Is he were a college player. That was Ron, you uh -huh. see. No, we weren't excited. We were enthusiastic and we were eager, and we thought we could win. Yeah. I mean, Rod was only 37 years old in 1951. And that was, Morris, his first year as total head coach. Okay. So the 51 club has that to brag about, if that's something. And, and the 51 club went to Omaha and I think won a couple of games but did not win the championship that year. I mean, do you remember the trip to Omaha? Oh, yeah. I was a losing pitcher on the elimination game against Tennessee. And that, and the, and the, 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 that if you had won that game, you would have gone into the, the, the final. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, it was a tough break. We were ahead. And Hal Starnowski, Stanley's twin, who is no longer with us, was in left field. He wasn't used to that. Oops. It's okay. Um, he tried to shoestring a ball and three runs scored. That was the third out. Do you remember anything about, um, I, I don't know if it was called Rosenblatt Field then, but anything about Rosenblatt Field? <clears throat> well, vaguely it was a, you know, they made it to be a, a professional ballpark. Yep. And, and I believe that a pro team did play there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was a great ballpark. The fans were great. The Trojans were always welcome. And, of course, in years to come, they were there all the time. Yes. Five in a row yes. once. Yes. Amazing. Uh, Bob, you played left field on March 26, 1951. What do you remember about Mantle's two home runs? I've never seen a ball hit quite that hard so often against a, 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 a competitor of ours. And of course, I realized at that point in time that we were playing the New York Yankees, which is a pretty awesome team. David Rankin was saying that Coach Dado treated the game like any other game. Do you recall it that way? I think so. You have to do that based upon what you've worked on and one thing or another. And it's important to, to do those basic things that any baseball player does. But at some point in time, we ended up, they were a much better team than we were. And I can understand that because they were professional and we were not. It must, I, I mean, Mantle was just a kid, but to be out there on the same field as DiMaggio and Rizzuto and Barra yeah. must have been something. Well, he was a rookie that year. And of course, the rest is history as far as that goes, because he ended up in the all, on the All-American uh, and the, uh, the most important team. What, what was playing left field at Bovard Field like? It was a little different because it was a little tight. Uh, on, the, on the left field line where I would be, it's not very far from where the foul line was. And of course, then just past that, we had just a picket fence. So we needed to move in a direction. In fact, I can remember one of the, one of the hits that Rizzuto hit happened to be a, line, a big, tall ball on the left-hand side, and I was fortunate enough to be able to reach over and grab that ball for an out, which is pretty cool. Was, was it left field? I've, I've heard about a tree that kind of hung into the playing field. Was that left field or right field? That was the right field and fairly close to where first base used to be. Yeah. And what was it like playing for Rod Dado? Rod was a very outstanding individual. You could always tell that he had a great deal of... of uh, confidence in all of us and never yelled or screamed or anything like that he would take us aside if we'd done something wrong and indicated how to, to correct it in order to get it right that's great thank you
Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for these great Trojans who are part of baseball history.